Hey, good morning, everybody. It's like my third take. Hopefully, I can make this video now without somebody come bother me. Uh, safety man just wanted to come check my paperwork. It was flawless, in case you didn't know. But anyway, uh, this is Mr. J. And uh, I just wanted to make a quick video uh, for me, for the future, and for anybody else looking to set up the LMI, or as Grove likes to call their shit, because they got to be different, the RCL, uh, Rated Capacity Limiter on the Grove 530E-2 uh, rough terrain crane. Uh, it's pretty simple, but uh, if you haven't set it up yet and you've never been on one of these, it, you know, it might be a little confusing at first. So I'm not gonna go through starting a crane up and from, from dead to, to ignition, because you're just gonna be greeted with this screen. Actually, I just killed the machine and just, just turned it on. This is what's gonna come up after it goes through its checks. I'm going to use the on-screen controls, the buttons. There is a, a knob with some buttons behind the right joystick. I'll show you that in a minute. It's very similar to some of these uh, luxury car makers nowadays. Um, but we're going to use this just for the purposes of the video. So you see the arrow is pretty self-explanatory. I can go through and change all the stuff. The easiest way is just go through it like it says. It's going to start off with OK because it's going to pull up with the button highlighted on OK because it's going to remember the last thing you set it on. Uh, parts aligned, chip stowed, and you're going to see a number. As you should know, this number correlates with the different load charts that are in the, uh, the, the manual. So if the, this is the load chart for the basic configuration, you know, loading off the main block, outriggers fully extended, blah, 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 the basic configuration. If I had a different configuration set up, you know, outriggers mid extended, this number would be different. And you could double check the capacities that it's showing on the LMI. You could double check that with what's on the load chart and you should. So anyway, you're gonna press okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're gonna press the question mark to run it through the setup wizard. You've got the different options. This is, you know, making a lift, wheel stopped, making a lift, rolling, outriggers not extended, uh, outriggers mid, outriggers fully extended. That's what we have here, so we're gonna click it. Then you've got uh, main block, no jib. There are other cr uh, Grove cranes that have this system, but your crane might have other settings and other sys settings for an auxiliary jib, you know, uh, and, and other functions, but this crane, and even maybe setting up a different counterweight, but on this crane, it's set up like this. So yours might be different if you're running like a five, you know, like a 560 or, you know, something different with other configurations. I just wanted to make that note. But I've got the jib stowed. Uh, by the way, free some free chicken here. On the load charts, when you're doing your deductions, you do not deduct for a stowed jib. You only deduct for an erected jib. They have it set up like that. So then you're going to go to parts aligned. I can click it and add. I don't know why it's got goes up to eight. I think there's only like three shivs up there. But so max should be six. But I digress. But I've got two parts aligned. We're just lifting. We've been lifting the rebar. I'm gonna click that. Then it's gonna press OK. You press OK and bada bing, bada boom, you are done. And you can see you want to double check everything. I've noticed on mine that after a while, there, the outriggers suck in a, a hair. So I had to like I had to re-level it, redo it yesterday. But pretty basic. Your max in this configuration. What's on the hook right now? The percentage of the chart. I find that this number might be off by a little bit depending on, by no more than a couple hundred pounds, depending on how you have the boom set, what angle you are at and whatever, because I know the block weighs 572 pounds, plus the rigging is another 80 or so, maybe 50. So, and I notice this changes a little bit. Uh, more free chicken. You press this button and the corresponding button on the joystick, uh, I'm sorry, on the, on the rotating knob, you can tear the weight. Just to give you an idea of what the load is itself. Uh, it kind of helps out. Just Again, I wouldn't go off this. I'd, I'd either calculate the weight or use the tag, but this is a good way of just kind of double checking to make sure the, 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 the weights match. Uh, and that's pretty much it on this screen. I'm gonna give you some free chicken uh, on this screen to help you out with a couple things. You'll notice there's this, this symbol, it's not here. This means that this symbol, if you're using the knob behind the right joystick, you're gonna mess with this screen. But these buttons, you can go back and forth without having to mess with that. So, pretty standard. This is showing you if these highlighted yellow, uh, 
that means uh, you know every, like this would mean that your your tires aren't centered if it was highlighted and there's a whole chart right here that shows you all the other fit shit but it's not what I wanted to talk about so if you press OK it'll bring you to the screen then you press uh, to set your outriggers I've already done it but I will show you you press this and if I wanted to extend the outriggers, I would press OK here. And if I wanted to raise the jacks, I would press OK here. So for instance, I would press this button. Now we're going to pull the phone off the, off the mount and show you the, the knob. It's a good old handy dandy rotating knob. You can see as I rotate it, it swaps it over. So I would press, press this. It's a green indicating that I'm going to, no matter if I move it, that I'm going to uh, adjust that. Then. What you do is these correspond to each individual outrigger you'll notice that if I press this button it does that outrigger if I press 2 it does 2 if I press all four it'll do all four I don't recommend doing four at a time I find on this particular crane at least at least the one time I tried it didn't want to lift all four at the same time maybe it was just whatever but I recommend just doing two at a time um, so then you would press and hold whatever things you wanted to do and then you would press uh, This is not focusing, but you can get, get an idea here. You, you would press this button. Let me see if I can focus it You press this you can see that's you know uh, Up and in that's out and down pretty self-explanatory so you press and hold these two Then you press that button and it's gonna it's gonna manipulate whatever jack you have selected uh, once you're done setting the outriggers Make sure you come back over to this button and press OK to get out of that so you don't accidentally press your outriggers. Uh, this right here is how you get to your hours to, to do your inspection. Um, I want to give you another quick tip. This, you can set the speed for every control, spin, scope out, boom up and down, uh, hoist. I don't, I don't mess with this, but I do, and I recommend the, I've been on two different 530E-2s with this company. I guess they like them. The boom control is very sensitive, and the main hoist control is also a little more sensitive than I would like, and you can adjust that by going here. You'll notice some graphs here. So for instance, for the boom, I like to put the boom on two and the winch on two. What that does, you'll notice, sorry if the camera's a little shaky, you'll notice that this graph is now curved. If I click it again and go to five, it's very curved. What that means, you'll see this curve, this graph for the scope in and out is linear. So the more I, if I press the, if I manipulate the joystick 10%, it's going to be 10% power, 50%, 50% power. On this, right now, if I manipulate the joystick 10%, it's only going to give me, you know, 5% power as according to this graph. I like to put that on two. I find two is a sweet spot, you know, because if I move the joystick 10 to 15%, what it does at this configuration, it does what I feel that the boom should do. When it's at the linear line like this, it's just too sensitive. I find that two and two for the for the boom up and down and the hoist is is uh, is recommended and is good for these. So uh, so we're gonna click OK and then we're gonna escape and we're back to the thing. So again, this has got the joysticks. Another cool thing I like about this and uh, it's you can cancel any control if I don't want the the scope uh, to be on. While I'm operating, I can turn that off, which I don't. Uh, I turn that off. Uh, same thing over here. You've got boom up and down controls. This is the control for it to, kill, to kill all. If I press this switch that I'm pointing at right here, everything goes green, meaning I'm live, I'm ready to go. If I press it again, it goes off. And uh, as far as setting things up and just a couple general tips and tricks, uh, that's what we got. Uh, I hope this helps you guys.